Hey everybody, uh, I decided to try to make this video to try to help out anybody that's trying to learn clinch mountain backstep the way Ralph Stanley played it, or as close you know as possible. Uh, because it is unique and it is tricky to grasp a hold off, especially if you're not familiar with anything, you know, if you're not really familiar with Ralph Stanley type techniques. But I, I've had a lot of people that really like this song and really wanted to figure out this one little tricky part that is essentially Ralph style. And that really makes it his turn, you know, on it. His makes it puts his spin on it, and uh, it's just it, it's a hard thing to kind of grasp if you're not familiar with it. I know I struggled with it for a long time trying to figure out. I had different things I'd come up with trying to figure out what Ralph did. When I figured out what Ralph did, I was like, man, that's what he's doing. That's it. But uh, when you when you get it, it's like that's it, you know. And I, I can't believe that was it, you know. But anyway, I'm gonna try to break this down. Hopefully, this will help somebody. But uh, a lot of people that try to play clinch mountain, and this is focusing mostly on the A part, uh, because a lot of people, you, you know, a lot of people do, you know, all kinds of different stuff with this song. But a lot of times, the A part is where you get the most questions at. How did Ralph do this? So I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. But anyway, most people that I have heard that play this song that come, you know, primarily from a Scruggs background, that's not really familiar with Ralph techniques, they will, for lack of a better term, and this is not meant derogatory in any way whatsoever but just for lack of a better term to describe this to explain the difference in it i would say that they chop the the a part out and what i mean by that is they would play it like this see so they're punctuating it different i guess is a better explanation but they're also putting a backward roll in it which is something ralph didn't do and that backward roll comes in this part See that right hand's going backwards after that pinch. They're noting. They're noting that note with their right hand. Ralph didn't do that. Ralph noted that note with this hand. And his roll stayed forward. This is where it gets a little tricky at. So, as you start off, this roll, as Ralph did it, it's a pinch. But it's a pull off right after that, right here. So it's a pinch. But then it goes to a forward roll. There's where that note comes in on the left hand. So after that pinch. I'm trying to show my pinky in there and noting it. So after that pinch. The forward roll in the right hand after the pinch, it goes thumb on the fifth, index on the second, pinky on the third string right there, then your middle finger on the first. So it goes right hand, we'll try to show it a little closer. Left hand. And you know, you note your second string here too, as you pinch this. But you can hear that hammer on. It's, it's being noted with this finger right here. And it's, it's kind of, for lack of a better term, we're gonna call it a ghost note because it's not, it's not noted with this hand, it's noted with the left hand. And a lot of times I think Ralph Stanley played a lot with his left hand more than he really would with his right hand in certain circumstances to get whatever note he was wanting to get across and this is definitely one of those times where he did that it's kind of his trademark on it but uh just taking it from the top again as you as you start off that part you know that's how you start but then you get to the pinch and like i said put most people that pick it this way they note that too that's also picked with this that that pull off is your instead of hitting it with this hand it's a pinch so instead of going you're going and then you go back to the forward roll 
and the timing on it is after you do your pinch and your pull off, it goes first string, second, then after that second, hear that? You noting second string up here, and then you don't pick that note with this hand. After that second string gets hit, so it goes. So all in all, you got your pinch, first, second on the first fret, then your ghost note hammer on, then your third finger on your right hand on the first string, back up to the fifth, and then you end with the index on the open third. So real slow, if I can try to get it all in here, all at the same time here. Once again, really, really slow to try to kind of, and remember I'm noting up here too with my index finger on this second string here on the first fret. All right. So the whole thing, hand stays forward motion the whole time. And instead of, you know, playing it that way, kind of chopping, chopping it out, how do you slide up right here? You note the fifth string right here, open, and then So it would just go slide up, fifth, open, first string on third fret. Then open. Then you start your pinch and your pull off roll with your hammer on. Hopefully that helps somebody. Hopefully I explained it good enough. I, I, it's a hard thing to try to explain, especially especially uh, you know without somebody here to actually physically show. And I ain't got a really good camera angle, but. Hopefully that helps somebody. You see my right hand there. style would be how you play that Ralph would go and that's a forward roll it starts on the fifth first on the noted on the fifth or the seventh fret being we're in a capoed up to a and it just goes so the index and the third finger are noted or or picking that first string fretted right there so it would go slow hopefully that helps somebody and i hope it does and good luck trying to capture the, the ralph sound because it is it is unique and uh a lot of people might not like it but not everything's meant for everybody to like but the ones that do like it is trying to figure it out close as ralph as they can i hope this helps you and uh, y'all have a good one.